Hi, my name is Carol Douglas. We're out here in beautiful, historic Mount Hope Cemetery in Rochester, New York. And today we're going to do an end of the season plein air painting of fall landscape. So there's a beautiful gazebo over there and there are some beautiful diagonals in it and I'm hoping to capture that before the light changes. So I start with a sketch. I transfer the sketch to my canvas and then mass in the darks and the lights and from there put in color. Then I build in some detail. Um, I never try to make field sketches particularly detailed. That's not my goal here. If I wanted to make a beautifully detailed painting, I'd be doing it in the studio. But I do like to record the lighting, the seasons, the immediacy, the cold air, <laughs> and, uh, and what the day is like here in Rochester. And by the way, it's about 37 degrees here today. I always start with a sketch when I'm painting outside because I want to see how the structure works. And once I have a sketch that I like where the black and white image works, the values work, then I transfer it to my canvas. And I'm consulting my drawing, but I'm not just transcribing my drawing. I'm actually looking at the objects. So we have a saying in my studio, which is draw slow and paint fast. The more time you spend with the drawing, the less mistakes, the fewer mistakes you make when you're painting. What interests me about this, this view are the diagonal trees leaning over the drive and the verticals in the gazebo. And I'm going to shorten this tree a little bit so that I can get some of those beautiful um, diagonal branches in it because they would normally be outside of the composition from this angle. It's important to remember that that gazebo is a cylinder. So the peak of it is at the center, and the decorations on it will go around it in a slight ellipse, whether or not it really looks that way from this angle. The reason I like the watercolor pencil is that if you make an error, you can just use water to erase it. I'm going to start massing in the darks now, and I do that with a combination of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And the great thing about this combination is, you can, if you balance it about evenly, it's almost black, but you can put more burnt sienna in it and make it warm, or you can put more blue in it and make it cool. And as always on the bottom layers of paint, painting, I'm going to work thin, and I'm going to be constantly correcting my drawing while I work. As you can see, I'm editing some pieces out of this. I'm not including some of the clutter that's in the foreground. With trees, it's important to know how each, each variety grows. All of these deciduous trees, the oak trees, are leaning in towards the light and the evergreens tend to stay more vertical. One of the reasons I do this like this is that the light will shift here, especially this time of year where the sun is very low on the horizon. The light's constantly shifting on this scene. So if I know what the light and dark pattern is before I actually start bringing color into this, then I can preserve what I really saw that attracted me rather than just chase the light around all over, all over the place all day.
So there's a pattern of darks over here that are in the pines, and I don't want to build them in, overbuild them, but I have to sort of know how much volume in the whole painting those darks are going to take up. Because what I want to do when, before I go on to the next phase of painting is I want to stand back from this and look at it and say, does the pattern of darks and lights attract me or not? Because that's really the question here. Is it beautiful or isn't it beautiful? Because I don't care how well you can paint the details in. If what you're painting isn't pretty, it's not going to have any meaning at all. So that's as far as I'm going to take it. And I'll stand back and I'll look at it and say, does it work for me? And there's some shorthand in here. For example, these tree trunks in here are really gray, and I just put the shadow edge in them. But I know that they're there, and I can look at the pattern, and I can say, the pattern itself will work for me. The mass of these four trunks here, 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 and here will carry the whole painting. So basically, in paint, we work thin to thick, big shapes to little shapes, dark shapes to light shapes. But I'm going to take a jump here, and I'm going to put some of the grays in in that gazebo right now. A small detail. In the, this time of year, in November, the light this far north is pretty much warm all day long. Um, so, you know, if, if there was snow on the ground, we'd see those shadows looking blue, and we would see the light looking a peachy, yellowy tone. Um, and so that's true about where, everywhere it hits the objects in the picture, too. Uh, the, the gazebo itself has a cool blue-green roof on it, but if you look at the face, um, the face facing the light there, it's actually got a lot of yellow tones in it. And so I'm going to modulate what I'm using a little bit warmer. So sometimes people ask me why I'm painting on a red board. And um, the answer is that you always want to tone the board into a mid middle value. Value is how light or dark something is. So I could have toned it something more traditional, like an ochre color or a brownish tone or even a gray tone. But the bottom line is I like the excitement that red gives you in a canvas. And so I almost always paint on a red board. Plus, if there's an explosion here, then I'll be all set up for it. While I tell people to work dark to light, what I don't want them to do is to build everything in there in colors that are too dark. I want them to actually use the darkness that's there. And that's enough detail for the gazebo for now. We can move on. Um, you probably observe I don't have any greens on my palette at all. I always mix my greens. Um, normally I would make a matrix of greens, but it's late in the season and there are very few greens to be had out here, so I'm just going to make up two of them. One of them is going to be made with black and yellow, and one of them is going to be made with blue and yellow. So that's our black and yellow. And I'm going to use a different yellow with the blue. So I'm going to use the bluish tone for those pines and the, the yellower tone for the foliage from the deciduous trees that's still 
somewhat. Yeah. Everything I have set up here is set up in an order because it's always in the same place and I can go to it really quickly. Uh, you wouldn't move the keys of your computer around every time you painted, so it doesn't make sense to put the paints out in a different order each time you do it. So everything that I do has to have set up behind it some kind of a shadow um, on a day like today when the shadows are so strong. Even the foliage of the, the pine trees has a, has a dark shadow behind it. It has to be set before I can come in and, and make the lighter tone. So now I'm going to start breaking it, these shapes down into smaller shapes um, between the trees. So they're sort of like a quilt. Um, and I'm not going to paint in every branch, but I'm going to get enough branches so that you have a sense that we're looking through a tree screen. Before I said that I could use this dark to make warm darks or cool darks, and now I have these great oak leaves at the top that I want to capture, so I'm going to use basically a much warmer version to put the shadows in under them. Although as I'm painting them in, I'm starting to realize that there's a lot of purple in them, so I better push that a little bit. And sometimes you just realize that you've totally messed up, as I just have, because this, this tone in here has a lot more orange in it. So just use your palette knife and scrape it out. I don't usually use red straight up, period, on my palette, um, because it almost never appears in nature straight up. When I need to use a red, I make I mix quinacridone violet with orange and I get close enough for government work. So 
I have some reds, true reds, coming in through the back there on the far right of my canvas. And I'm just going to make a mix of the quinacridone violet and the, and the orange, cadmium orange, and just place it in there. Um, and I'll use that to boot that up at the top, too. The important thing now is that I have the colors and the values all built up so I can, I can stop and look at it and say, Does it, is it pleasant to me? And I'd say it is pleasant to me. I think that this shape here kind of counterbalances this bright shape here. And now I can start to go into it and work on details. So I'm, I think we're considering the cold and the fact that it's a field sketch that I'm pretty well finished here. I think the pattern of, of uh, colors and the pattern of light and dark is good. I might take it into the studio and uh, fiddle with a few things, but I'm pretty happy with it.